Now, I'm going to leave it there because I want to leave time for Dr. Susan Oliver's talk. I know a lot of us really enjoy these talks. Now I'd like to tell you about some really interesting research from Australia that has recently been published in a journal called Immune. The research was undertaken by some scientists from the University of Melbourne and also the Monash Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. What they found was that noradrenaline, which is produced by the body in response to stress, can temporarily stop immune cells from moving and therefore the immune cells can't effectively fight pathogens or tumour cells. Now, a certain amount of noradrenaline is required for the body to function, but the researchers found that excess noradrenaline was responsible for impaired immunity. Anecdotally, it's been known for a while that you're more likely to get sick when you're stressed, but this research actually shows why. I also wondered when I read this, is if this could be partially responsible for what is known as the placebo effect. In a nutshell, the placebo effect occurs when people are given a sugar tablet and they get better. Now, sometimes this is just coincidence because the people are going to get better anyway, but sometimes the power of the mind is believed to play a role. So perhaps people who are told by a doctor that they are being given effective treatment will feel less stressed and get better sooner because they are producing less noradrenaline. Now, the researchers don't say this, it's just me speculating, but it could be behind some of the anecdotes that people share about taking X, Y, Z and feeling better immediately. Now, back to the key finding of the research that stress can impact the immune system. This does have important implications for COVID-19, particularly given a lot of people are stressed for the impacts of living in a pandemic. Dr. John did a video about two months ago where he discussed mental wellbeing and how to improve it, as well as how to recognise if you're in mental distress. So if you haven't seen the video, look it up. One thing he mentioned that helps with stress though is having a pet. Yes, having a pet. But today I'd like to talk about something else that causes a lot of people stress, and that is bullying. Now, some people have mentioned in the comments how awful my Aussie accent is, and they're right, it's terrible. What may surprise you is that I once had a Northern English accent. However, when I started school, a number of kids started bullying me about it, and they basically made my life a total misery. So what I did was I practiced every day trying to imitate how they spoke and I was hoping as long as I, you know, could start speaking like them, they'd stop picking on me and well, you can, you can see the results. <laughs> However, most people who are bullied are bullied about things that they can't change and so they continue to suffer and often suffer in silence. So if I could ask everyone listening to be on the lookout for people being bullied and do what you can to help. Sometimes just showing them that there are people who care will go a long way. And of course, most bullies are cowards, so they won't want people on the side of their victims. And if you are a victim of bullying, don't do what I did and keep it to yourself. Speak to someone about what is happening and don't try to solve the problem by changing. Remember, the bully is a person who has a problem, not you. So thanks for listening and stay happy. Good messages from Susan as always. Thank you for that, Susan. Stress and immunity, definitely. I mean, stress definitely reduces the immune system, doesn't it? And anyone in a difficult situation, whether it's bullying or not, whether it's someone sick, whether it's someone isolated at home, whether it's someone with long COVID, whatever it is, then what we can always do, of course, is just come alongside them. Just, just come alongside people, let them know you're there. That's often enough to make a big difference. Placebo effect is 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 definitely uh, an interesting factor. Many causes for that, probably. Um, and and the placebo effect is just that. If I if I give you a treatment and you believe it's going to work, then that can help you whether it's an effective treatment or not. But the opposite also works, which is a nocebo effect. So if you give someone something that they believe to be a poison or a toxin or is going to harm them in some way, they can start feeling ill. So the placebo effect is positive, the nocebo effect is negative, and it definitely works. I can't remember if I told you before, but I used to be into uh, what wild food foraging. 
And um, I remember I once picked some mushrooms and I took them home and, I, you know, I identified them from the book and I cooked them up and I ate them. And um, then I got home and I looked at my book and again, I thought, just a minute, that, that mushroom I ate had white, white, white flecks underneath, not brown ones. I think I've eaten the wrong mushroom. And I convinced myself I'd eaten the wrong mushroom and I started feeling sick. And I thought, oh, I better go to a and &E. I'm feeling sick of eating the wrong mushrooms. But I hadn't. I'd eaten the right mushrooms. Uh, I, it was just, I, I had a nocebo effect because I'd come to believe I've eaten the wrong ones. Don't ever eat mushrooms unless you know exactly what they are. And someone, someone's told, don't, don't eat mushrooms, whatever you do. Um, for, that, that you pick wild, just get them from a shop, from an expert. Um, Anyway, I don't do that anymore, so so don't worry about that. But it's just just an example of the nocebo effect, where you just uh, believe something's happened, and uh, it, it does make you does make you feel ill. This is how witch doctors work. You're putting curses on people. I think a lot of the time it's just nocebo effect because people believe in it, that then they start feeling ill. So placebo effect and nocebo effect, which of course is why we have control groups in clinical trials, as we've mentioned before. Thanks to Susan, thanks to Julie, the dog, and thanks to you for watching.